And it's all because we did the research the right way. Believe me, NIH would never, ever have put their reputation, integrity, and respect on the line if they hadn't have seen not only the quality of the work, but the quality of the journals in which we publish, including the number one ranked journal in nutrition, agriculture, food chemistry in the world, according to Reuters. And that was the Journal of Agricultural Food Chem. When we published that paper in those most difficult of journals to get published in, that made a profound impact on their willingness to use U.S. taxpayer dollars to start studying this fruit and to try to understand also why is it that company like Monavi is growing that fast? There had to be something out there because I've been at this for over 30 years. I've rarely ever wanted to be involved with any network marketing company because they come and go. They all come, they have these big meetings, they get you all excited, you fill your garage full of product, and then 18 months later they're gone. I've seen it hundreds of times, and it's never about the product, it's always about their compensation plans, all these promises they make. I've gone to some of those meetings, they make all these things where we've got this science and that, and I look at it, it's a book, it's unreferenced, it's about some guy who's got no pedigree, no knowledge of the field, and that's why they disappeared. So you can understand my skepticism when Dallin calls me and says, I have a network marketing company and I need this acai. We've looked at the research you've been doing. This is terrific. Can we use it? Can we share this information with people around the world? And I said to Dallin, I have only one thing to ask you. And this is out of my frustration knowing the network marketing industry. I need your commitment to support science. If you're willing to do that, you can have all this research that I've spent nearly 15 years working on. You know, Dallin, I want to say this publicly, and I want to say it with the cameras running and everybody around the world hearing it. I am honored to work with Mona V. You kept your word. I have never worked with a company, and I've worked with over 500 companies in the nutraceutical industry in 55 countries, and you kept your word and you have been outstanding in supporting the research that we've asked needed to be done on acai and Mona V. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm a scientist. I got 18 minutes and 14 seconds to show you what we learned. <laughs> so here we go, the jet engine. <laughs> okay. The first thing we, we knew when we started was, yes, antioxidants were important. There are today over one quarter of a million papers published on antioxidants in the scientific literature. And among the top foods that we have are things like blueberries, blackberries. We've even been studying many of the berries in Canada, especially up in some of the Arctic regions, because they're placed under tremendous stress. And as a result, they have to develop chemical defenses to survive, and they can pass that on. And that's why if it's between you and a bear, and the bear wants those berries, you are not going to get those berries, okay? <laughs> There's a reason why. But the trouble is the season's short. The, the amount of the material is very limited, and there's tremendous variability in the antioxidant activities based on research we've been doing. But the U.S. Department of Agriculture did develop and publish a list starting in 2004 of all of the top foods in terms of antioxidant capacity against the peroxyl free radical. That is the most predominant free radical in the human body. And what we d discovered when we got acai was it blew it off the charts. In fact, I'll never forget my day. You've heard it on my tape. You've seen it before. I love describing it because it was one of those moments that every scientist in their life dreams of. It's that call from the laboratory where, Alex, are you sitting down in your chair? I just sent you an email. Open up your attachment. Yep, I see it. I click it open. He says, look at what we found with this purple powder you sent us. We're all dying to know what is it that you sent us because they were, they were given this blindly. And they wondered, did you put an extract in there? Did you like sprinkle lots of some kind of a chemical in there? I said, no, it's a fruit that I've been studying for some time. And they said only one thing because it took two and a half computer screens to the right for that line to go across. 
And, I, and, I, and of course, my immediate response was, well, that can't be right. You know, that was a laboratory error. I mean, Alex, we knew you were going to say that. We've redone that six times. So at our expense, and I said, no kidding. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 then, and then after that, um, they, they said, you know, Alex, uh, we have only one request, okay? And I said, what's that? And they said, would you please be sure to put our name on the paper when you publish this? <laughs> now, when scientists, and this guy is world famous in antioxidant research, he was the head of the lab who called, um, I knew there was something very exciting here. If he's willing to put his name on the paper, in other words, he's willing to stake his reputation that this is true. But I'm a scientist, and science is about replication. It's about the ability to replicate the results, okay? S could someone else see the same thing in another laboratory who's also qualified to do the work? And so we sent it to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Agriculture Research Services, because they're the world leaders in studying antioxidants in foods. And then I got a hold of Dr. Sean Lee Wu and Dr. Ron Pryor. Dr. Ron Pryor was the co-inventor of the Oxygen Radical Absorbance Capacity Assay, or ORAC assay. And I asked them, Here's, I'm going to send you some powder. They didn't know about the Boston results from Brunswick's lab. And they went ahead and they called me up and they said the same thing. Uh, Alex, can you be sure when you publish your results that our name's on your paper? <laughs> because they had never seen anything this strong. And of course, then they got excited and they started asking questions. And I said, you know, gentlemen, I don't have a lot of answers right now. But I'm, I know we have something extraordinary here that's worth studying. And I could tell as I went from the University of California and different institutions that everybody started to say, Alex, you've got to keep studying this. There's something here that could be of profound value to human health. And that you're going to see probably published next year from these NIH papers. By the way, I am one of the co-authors of that paper that is going to be published. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing, too, and probably why nobody else had discovered this. You see, it's much less expensive to spray dry it. Spray dry it's just you shoot it in the air. It's done with heat, and then you expose it to oxygen. And you sort of like throw it in the air, and it's sort of the, uh, the water content evaporates. That's a basic lay way of describing it. But when you spray dry it or sun dry it or use other methods, the antioxidant activity is very, very low. So there's nothing to catch your attention. It's when you lock it in because in freeze drying, we do it in a vacuum. And, we, and the reason why, again, knowledge is power, is because in fruits, particularly in the tropics, you have to degrade them very quickly. You have no idea how much is falling down on the ground in the equator, that area, every single moment, and day and night. And as a result, it would just pile up and go right out into the, out of the atmosphere. If there wasn't some mechanism for breaking things down quickly, we call those oxidases. They're enzymes that rely on oxygen to break down. And what we're doing is, in a vacuum, we're locking that in without oxygen, so the oxidases can't get stimulated, so we've preserved all that antioxidant activity. Do you follow? Yeah. That's in your bottle. You see all that good stuff? <laughs> okay. So we can now compare all of these, you know, foods. I mean, you know, the good foods, these, these blackberries and blueberries and cranberries and all of those things, uh, and we can compare them for moisture content so that we have a fair comparison. We can then look at the total antioxidant capacity and then the serving size so we have fair comparisons. And what you will see compared to any food, acai pulp is like way out there compared to anything, five, six times greater. Okay. Another thing that we have is that when we were looking at its antioxidant capacity, there are different free radicals in the human body. One of these is really bad. Okay, really, really bad. I mean, this is like a toxic, toxic free radical. And when you talk about diseases and things like that, it's always there. There's a lot of this being produced every waking second. And that is the hydroxyl radical. 